one of the first calls that you should make if you get a formal challenge is to them because they've got a packet and they'll put the one together if they don't already have it for that specific title with pretty much everything you need um, for background information on that book. And one of the things I, I asked one of the people, I said, do you just, I said, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of common titles that, I mean, we all know some that are being challenged across the country. And I said, do you kind of have those packets ready to go and basically like a Google Drive, Google Drive folder that you're just going to send the link out? And they said, for the most part, yes, but you know, there's individual ones that pop up here and there depending on the level. Hello, friends, and welcome to Season 6 of the Future Ready Librarian podcast series, Leading from the Library. This is a podcast for all librarians wherever you are in your journey. It is filled with amazing guests, important topics, and engaging conversations that will inspire, engage, and support all of us as Future Ready Librarians. I am your host, Shannon McClintock-Miller. I am the District Teacher Librarian at Van Meter Community School in Van Meter, Iowa and I serve as the Future Ready Librarian Spokesperson. I have the pleasure of working within my library and school community and also with others around the country and world through Future Ready Librarian events, conferences, consulting, writing, and more. I am honored to bring these voices and the work of others to our podcast and to all of you. And today I am so excited to invite my friend Chad, who I haven't seen forever, to the podcast to talk about important things that he is doing within his library. So welcome, Chad. Hello. Good to see you, Shannon. So good to see you too. And let's just start by having you tell us a little bit about you and the role that you have within your school. Okay. So um, my name is Chad Lehman, and I am the library media specialist at Bayside Middle School in Bayside, Wisconsin. Um, we are a suburb of Milwaukee. Um, this is my seventh year here. Uh, prior to coming to this school, um, I spent eight years as an elementary librarian in a couple of other districts. And prior to that, I uh, taught third grade for a while. So um, and I have ventured out of the elementary world to uh, middle school, and I love it. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, middle school in the library is awesome, right? Yeah, like, it's such a different beast compared to elementary. You have a lot yeah. more flexibility in your time. You know, I, we, I have a flexible schedule, so I'm in classrooms here and there. I don't have, you know, classes coming in from, you know, opening bell to the, to the end of the day. So, yeah, I, I, I really like it. I do miss the picture books, though. That was yes. the one thing I miss the most. Yeah, I know that that is a good part of being an elementary librarian for sure. But you can share picture books with any. True, true. Especially and today, it's Read Across America Day. Exactly. And I did read some today, so that was good. That's awesome. Well, I was really excited when you shared what you wanted to talk about on the podcast today, and that is creating a reconsideration policy for your school library. And I think that there are so many of us who are thinking about these things within our library and within the world of librarianship that I'm looking forward to just talking about this today, because it's something that I think about too within my own practice as a librarian. And so just to start, I want to know, like, why did you create a policy like this? What was happening within your school or or at that point that you needed to do that? Yeah, well, you know, we're all aware of all of the stuff that's going on around the country and some states way more than others as far as book challenges and all that type of stuff. And um, when I started to look at what we had in place from a board policy perspective and procedures, we didn't have anything that specified library books. We It was all linked into curriculum materials. We had a very generic, really simple process, not even really clearly defined of what would happen if somebody wanted to challenge curriculum materials. And as we all know, library books are completely different from the curriculum and should be treated very different. So um, we knock on wood, haven't had any issues yet. Um, 
but wanted to have something in place because odds are at some point down the road, um, you know, we could have a situation where we do have some books challenged. So we wanted to have something in place so that when, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen, but if it does, that we're ready to go and we're not scrambling at the last minute with, you know, what should we do? How should we handle all this? Um, so that was really the main driving force behind it is we didn't, we didn't have anything specific. Um, and when we talked to the, our curriculum director and building principals, um, they totally agreed and they're like, put something together, we'll bring it to the board and, you know, kind of go from there. So that was the main reason for us getting, getting rolling on it. Well, that's great. And, you know, something like that can be something too, that is a little overwhelming or daunting for people to take on. And so I'm sure that there were some steps that you took to make that process yep. pretty manageable for you as well. Yeah. You know, a lot of it was just getting some background information, doing a lot of learning. Last summer, um, I attended a full day workshop that was put on by our Department of Public Instruction. Um, and half of the day was kind of on book challenges and things like that. Um, so I had a lot of that information and then really just started looking around at what policies a lot of other districts had in place, a bunch that uh, were in Wisconsin and some in other places. You know, the Future Ready Library Facebook group is a great resource um, for that information. So pulled some things there. Um, the CCBC, which is out of University of Wisconsin-Madison, had a lot of information. Um, so the, the really the first thing we did is just look at a whole bunch of different things. And what, what do they all have in common? Um, what would fit our situation the best? Um, and then we just started writing. Well, then the other, I guess the other challenge was figuring out what's actual policy versus what's just a procedure and how you're going to handle things. And so that was kind of a learning process too with how the board handles that type of stuff. But um, basically just kind of laid down, all right, here's what's going to happen. You know, if there's just kind of an informal challenge, what are the steps we're going to take? And then from there, um, if we can't satisfy the problem, then if someone says, okay, I want to formally challenge this title, what are we going to do? So then we really laid down um, a huge process from, you know, letting the principal know to, you know, getting the team together to review things, what's going to happen during the process, what can the person who uh, makes the complaint, what can they do? We definitely wanted to make sure that the book um, stays on the shelves during the entire process until anything is completed. Um, and then after we kind of did that, then we started looking at what's the actual form that people would fill out. Um, because we really wanted a lot of it. We didn't want people just to be like, hey, I don't think you should have this book on the shelves. Mm -hmm. We really wanted to have them analyze why. What specifically did they have any issues with? You know, things like some of the questions we had, had on there were things like, have you looked at any reviews of this book? You know, is there something that you would recommend in place of this book? You know, some things like that. Um, and one of the other things that that we had, and, and we kind of tossed, tossed this about with administration um, while we were planning is, um, and it actually worked out really good because it related to other things they have already in policy is that the complaints can only be made by um, district residents, parents or guardians of someone who of a student or a district or staff like it can't be any outside groups or someone who doesn't live in our community and mm -hmm. when we brought that up with the school board the superintendent's like yep 100 percent that follows with other things that we're doing so we felt really good about that as well because we didn't feel that someone who's outside of our community should have a say in what's happening inside so um you know, it was, it was a long process. It, you know, it probably took a good, you know, from start to finish, probably a good month of really just kind of looking at things and um, solidifying things. And then I worked, you know, I kind of did the rough outline and then I ran it by Julian, who I worked with 
Um, and then we kind of went back and forth for a while. Then we met a couple of times and really hammered it out and then brought it to um, our director of technology and one of our um, reading coaches and, you know, try to get everybody on the same page. And then eventually um, the superintendent wanted us to present it to the school board to make it a formal policy. And we're really lucky right now that our board is super supportive of everything that we do and when we took it to them um they basically said thanks so much for being proactive on this and they approved it on the spot they had one question about one thing we put in there when we explained what it was We're like yeah, that makes perfect sense they didn't even um normally when they approve new board policy they they do like a second reading another night and they just said, one of them made a motion, let's just approve this without a second reading and boom, unanimous, done. So it was, That's it awesome. could, from that perspective, it could not have gone any smoother. Um, but it's just, again, it's a, we're in a good situation right now with where we're with our district and our community and um, that that worked out really well. Well, it has to do too with the work that you did, right? That you put in and and that research and, uh, you know, a month might seem like a long time, but really to me, like you think about all of the, not only research, but really thinking about your own community and how you're supporting not only your library, but thinking about the vision and mission of your school district and, and what you want that to really like shine through with how you are writing that and, and presenting that to your school board and to your administrators. Yeah, one of the things our district has done over the last couple of years is they they were really looking at sort of the future of the district and what are some main, they're calling them pillars of um where we need to focus on things moving forward in the district and what came and there was a lot of community members involved along with staff. Um, and one of the things that came through loud and clear was they wanted diversity, equity and inclusion um, to be in place across the board where we don't have a very diverse district. Um, so they, they really wanted that to be a focus. And, you know, obviously over the years, our collections have really caught up with that a little bit and we're getting, um, you know, a much more diverse collection. Um, but at our elementary school, they're, they're doing a March Madness book and um, they're compared to previous years, the selections are much more diverse than they've been in the past. Um, so there was a little bit of push to get this in place before that was launched, just in case, um, even though the superintendent and the school board and the building principal had read every book involved and was like, yeah, these are going to be great. They're, they represent our community. Um, but, you know, there just takes one person, <laughs> you know, yeah. to have an issue with something. Um, but you're right, though. I mean, we we didn't rush through the process and we really looked at a lot of things and one of the questions that they asked us when we first put it to the school board is did you look at other districts and we're like yeah we looked at a ton of them um and that was that was great because there really is a lot of common threads among a lot of them so um it was pretty easy to grab chunks from this one and you know pieces from this other one and and make it ours. So we're really happy with how it turned out. That's really great. Well, and to have your school board support you like through not only that process, but I think, you know, I always tell people that transparency is so important, you know, to not be afraid to go in front of them and to work with them and have them be part of your team um, from the beginning is something that is, is so important. And it, and it shows that support and also, I think, the success of our library programs and, and how they're viewed by them, which is great. So I have to ask, too, like, 
you know, you have this policy in place. And I know that within my school, like one thing that we have made sure to do is to have these things on our website to make sure that we're sharing them with our, we have a brand new library advisory board that includes parents and teachers and our library staff. And so that is a really important thing too, to think thoughtfully through how we're sharing these as well. I'm sure you have too, right? Yeah, we, you know, we, a couple of years ago when we put together our future ready library plan, which is sort of required by the state, um, we put out in, you know, front and center, our collection development policy and a lot of that type of stuff. Um, so we updated that along the way um, as part of this and in the, the packet that we put together that we would give someone if they did go through with a formal challenge, we had a lot of that information in there. Like here's, Here's how we select books. And I think there's, I would guess most parents and probably even some staff members don't really understand what goes through when we add books to the collection. It's not just, oh, I went to the bookstore and I saw that one and it looked kind of cool. The cover was great and we added it. You know, there's a lot that goes that goes into it. So when, when we put this together, we wanted to make sure that that policy was part of this packet for people so that they just understood that there's a lot of thought that goes in, you know, there's a lot of reviews read and, you know, not only just from, you know, School Library Journal and Hornbook and all these that, you know, like our Future Ready Library, librarian group, you know, we talk and recommend things to each other and things like that. So, um, getting that information and then we made sure that our website up was up to date with some of the tweaks that we made um added in there you know here's what happens when you want to challenge it's it's related to this specific board policy um our next step now is to share all of this with the staff mm -hmm. um especially with the I've got two library assistants, kind of like a morning person in the afternoon, and they overlap over lunch recess because you know they all have extra duties and things like that. Um, but just to just to let teachers know, so that you know they in some cases might be the first ones who get the complaint about something that their kids are reading. So we just want to make sure that everybody is aware of the process and what to do when or if. Um, you know, someone comes to them because the, the last thing we want people to do is be like, oh, yeah, you know, I kind of read that one too. And yeah, maybe it shouldn't be, you know, we don't really want the yeah. teachers putting any of their judgment or lean one way or the other, or, you know, and sometimes they just don't have the background either of the book or whatever. So um, keep everybody aware of what's going on. I just think the more open communication you have on it, the better. I agree. And I think that that's what's so great about doing this is just being proactive and having something in place because there is, you know, lots of conversations right now about books and the things that we're doing within our libraries. And I just talked to um, Kelly from your state about all the great things that you're doing within, you know, future ready librarian plans. And mm -hmm. We're actually going to have her on the show this season too. And so you guys are lucky. You have lots of support in Wisconsin and, and it, within your school, you have some great librarians there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, we're really fortunate. We've got, um, you know, like you said, a ton of really good resources between DPI and CCBC at the workshop that I attended um, over the summer. One of the things that they said was, one of the first calls that you should make if you get a formal challenge is to them because they've got a packet and they'll put one together if they don't already have it for that specific title with pretty much everything you need um, for background information on that book. And one of the things I, I asked one of the people, I said, do you just, I said, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of common titles that, I mean, we all know some that are being challenged across the country. And I said, you kind of have those packets ready to go and basically like a Google Drive, Google Drive folder that you're just going to send the link out. And they said, for the most part, yes, but, you know, there's individual ones that pop up here and there, depending on what level. But, um, yeah, we're we're really lucky that um, we have that because 
you know, when I read some of the posts that in situations uh, that other people are in, they don't have that support. And that can be, I, I'm just, I'm glad I'm not in that situation. And I feel for those people because I think in some cases, for whatever reason, they got just put into the position. They don't have the training. They don't know where to go. So, you know, that Facebook group is invaluable for those people because it's just such a giving a giving group. And you're one of the people leading that, which is awesome. And it just keeps the discussion going. So um, for those of us who are in good situations and have a lot of support, it's nice that we can, you know, be a resource for maybe for some people who aren't. And not that we're experts in anything because we obviously reach out to each other all the time. but um yeah where I'm, I'm in a good place right now but it could easily change you know and you're gonna be one ready to the next one one school board election or something like that and or one retirement by a certain administrator you know whether it's a superintendent or building principal it can all it can all change quickly so well i'm glad that we all have each other and this is so valuable for our listeners and I know that as they listen, I'm sure that they will wonder too where they can find you to reach out. So why don't you tell us where we can find you online and if they have any questions where they can reach you at? Yeah. So um, on Twitter and Instagram, it's IMC guy. Um, I'll just share that it's some people used to think it was like iMac guy when the iMac first came up, but when I first started as an elementary librarian um the libraries at the school i was at within the district were instructional media centers they weren't library media centers so it was the imc not the lmc and the first i don't know a couple of weeks of school i i'd go around and collect all the library books from the classes each week before they came in for book checkout and you know the the, the kindergartners didn't have any idea who I was at the time. And I walked in to get the books and one of the kids goes, Hey, there's the IMC guy. And, <laughs> and this was the time when like Twitter was just kind of going. And I was like, do I want like my real name for my account or do I want something else? And then that happened. And I was like, that has to be. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's just kind of funny. And it, I don't, I wish I would remember who that little dude was because it just Oh, that's... I don't know. It's funny. So it's IMC guy on Twitter. You can, you know, I'd, I'm in the future ready group too. So if anyone, you know, wants to see what we've done, I'd be more than happy to share anything. Um, so yeah. That's Thank you so me. much. Yeah. I'm definitely going to reach out to you myself because I want to see what you have made, but we just appreciate everything that you share and and as Chad said, he's in the Future Ready Librarian Facebook group and always just such an amazing resource. So thank you so much. You're just so inspiring, all the work that you've done. Oh, thank you. Well, I've learned from you and many other people over the years. So great. We're lucky. I know. Well, I'm going to make sure that your information is attached to this podcast, along with any resources that you want to share. And also remember listeners that there will be a certificate of professional development that you can download and fill out to use as well. So as always, thank you to all of our listeners for joining us for this episode of the Future Ready Librarian podcast series, Leading from the Library. And a very special thank you to our sponsors, Follett. You make a difference in our library schools and within our lives and that of our students every day. We just appreciate everything you do. I hope that you can take what you learned in today's podcast and put it to use within your practice as a future ready librarian. Until next time, friends, keep finding ways to lead within and from your library. <laughs>